I'm Paul Slingle, Managing Director here at City National Rockdale, and welcome to Economic Perspectives. Well, 2022 is in the books. For many of us are happy to have that behind us. But 2023 is ahead of us, and the number one economic story that we have is inflation. The Fed is committed to help bringing inflation back to its target rate. This isn't an easy thing for the Fed. It's a big, tall order for them. Um, because CPI, which is probably the most popular of all metrics that are used for measuring inflation, hit a peak back in June of 9.1%. That was a 40-year high. It has since come down, now stands at 6.5%, but it still has a long way to go to get to the Fed's target rate of 2%. So the Fed will continue to raise interest rates this year, not as fast as last year, but they will probably keep interest rates high for a long period of time because they're trying to slow down the pace of economic growth, the demand for an awful lot of goods and services, and that should help bring down inflationary pressures. They hope to do so by creating a soft landing, meaning no recession, but that's not an easy trick. So I thought we'd take a deep dive into CPI and start off with a couple of charts. Uh, let's take a look at this first chart here. So this is showing uh, CPI since 1980, the columns that you see here in gray that represents recessionary periods. But over on the right-hand side, you can see where CPI, the most recent reading at 6.5%, is lower than what we've had of late, but it is still high on a historical basis. You can see that the level is as high as what we had about 40 years ago, back in the early 1980s. But the big story of inflation is this next page here. Here, we're breaking it into the two major components, inflation for services and inflation for goods. Goods is in the dark blue. You can see how that shot up quite a bit uh, in the period following the recession while we were dealing with the lockdown, but has since retreated significantly and stands at 2.1%. This is following the classic supply-demand model that we all studied in Economics 101. During the lockdown and the period of time after that, demand for goods was very, very high at a time where it was very limited because of the pandemic. Uh, that has since reversed itself as consumers have gone to spend more time on services as the economy has reopened and demand has fallen. At the same time, supply of an awful lot of those goods has picked up. A lot of the supply chain problems have been fixed and inventories are up quite a bit. But the light blue line, this is the big concern for the Fed. This is the inflation for services. And service inflation tends to be stickier. It's not going to respond as quickly as goods does to supply and demand. So that is bothersome for the Fed. Now, services is made up of two major components. One is housing, which is the lion's share of it. In this chart here, you can see where CPI uh, for shelter, this is what the CPI calls uh, housing, has moved up significantly. The line is the year-over-year -year change. You can see it currently sits at 7.5%. The columns show the three-month change to give us an idea of the recent trend, and it's annualized, so it makes it for easy comparison. It's sitting at 9.2%, so the trend continues to be on an upward trajectory. But the Fed is somewhat happy with where they stand on that, mainly because of the actions of last year that pushed up market rates to very, very high levels. And you can see that in this next chart here in terms of housing costs. Housing costs for ownership in the dark blue and housing costs for rentals in the light blue are both moderating significantly. And this is mainly a result of the higher mortgage rates. This market data will soon be feeding into the CPI data and should help bring that part of service inflation down. But there's another part of service inflation that bothers the Fed quite a bit, and it has to do with your day-to-day -day services, where labor-intensive occupations fulfill that. You know, that's going out to dinner, that's going to the doctor, that's going to the dry cleaner. You can see here on the chart on the left where the demand for workers is extraordinarily strong. The dark blue line shows the amount of job openings. 10.5 million. Yes, it's down a little bit from the peak, but it's still a high number. The amount of workers that are available sits at 6 million. That's in the light blue line. Uh, we've done the math for you over here on the right-hand side, and you can see that there's 1.7 jobs available for every person looking for a job. That's a strong labor market, and that's an enormous imbalance that the Fed is trying to correct. And the main reason why they want to correct that is because that will help bring down labor costs. And that's what the Fed is trying to do. Labor costs have moved up significantly since the recession. You can see that in this next chart here. This is average hourly earnings. 
And from 2010 up until the recession, you can see it was relatively benign, growing at between two to three percentage points per year, but has moved up significantly since then. And that concerns the Fed because higher labor costs just leads to higher service costs and thus the high level of inflation that they're trying to deal with. So the Fed thinks that you need to move uh, average hourly earnings to a range somewhere around two and a half to three percent per year. That would be consistent with inflation of around two percent. So in this final chart here, we just see what the Fed's expectations are going forward in terms of interest rate movements. This chart here, the light blue line, just shows the history of Fed funds and the dark blue columns show what the Fed is expecting to happen this year and the next few years. So the Fed is going has plans at least to move the Fed funds rate up to 5.1% this year and won't start tapering interest rates until next year in 2024. But by having them higher for longer should help reduce the demand for an awful lot of workers and bring down the average hourly earning, obtaining the goal of what the Fed is trying to do. So yes, the Fed has the goal of bringing inflation back to 2%. Uh, we think that they will be able to do so. They're confident that they will be able to do so. And the main vehicle in terms of what they're trying to do is reduce the wages that are happening in the labor force, and that will help bring down the surface portion of inflation. Thus, overall inflation should start moving back towards 2%. Thank you for watching. I'm Paul Single, and I'll see you next month.